on the knowledge and use of picking your household items in Ban Hoi Pong community. Kalayani Watana Sung Sanga, Pasun Tan P, Watana Tam Prapini Sun Pau, Pratat Gau Lam Ha, Hok Tara Lang Ton Nam, Nam Lut Lam Am Her Nay Fun. So Ban Hui Bong, so Ban Hui Bong community is located Kalayani Watana district in Chiang Mai province. Consisting of uh, 98% of Kakayo, they have ethnic groups. So, Ban Hoi Bung community has uh, beliefs and rituals that exist, whether it's uh, the household's items or social practices that has been passed on, actually shows uh, the culture and civilization and the harmony of the people's livelihood. Uh, with along with the agricultural sector that ex is the main occupation. So currently today, uh, during, amidst the globalization and capitalism actually hinders the livelihood or the way of living of the people. This contributes to the uh, great shift and uh, that's actually threatened the identity. So is it time now for us, the group of youth and the children to come back and think what can uh, what value can we add to our community so distinguished guests uh, commentators and the audience so we are from dan we are proud here to present the knowledge and the use of the Gataya household items in Ban Hui Bong community. So Ban Hui Bong community is located in the Kalayani Watana district in Mai. So this particular district is located in the new district in North East and adjacent with Pai Mehong Song. In the South, it's adjacent to Mehongson, Chiang Mai. Ban Hui Bong community is a rural community consisting of 98% of the ethnic group and the rest of the 2% is used to the So most of the occupation people are farmers in the agricultural sector. So this particular heritage is about 40% is still used and there's about 80% who would like to have the legacy passed on and about 50% of the people are willing to receive this legacy. So the household that are so items that are still used is uh, knives and chopping boards and about 50% is not used anymore. It's about, uh, is uh, mortars and uh, jars, and about 20 is not used anymore, such as rice and water containers. So the risk factors is uh, from the negligence and non-interest in the cultural heritage, and people current in and people tend to actually be more addicted to technological technology devices and they don't value their own cultural heritage. The threat, threat factors uh, is the way of life has changed and there's proliferation of technology and the electrical appliances and household appliances that actually is easily more easily used. So our project, uh, we uh, we have two uh, periods or two phase. So the first phase is the short term and the second phase is the long-term project. So we, in the short term, we want to try to consolidate knowledge and information and data about the household items from Pagakaya and maybe develop also the encyclopedia on the household items and all these heritage uh, items that are used and also the procedures in making them. So all this information, for example, the common name uh, or central dialect and the uh, local name from Payakaya and the uh, physical characteristics and the use of that particular item 
and maybe the owner of that cultural heritage. So in the long term, so the long phase, so we want to try to uh, establish the uh, uh, cultural heritage safeguard center and will be situated at the temple, which is the center of the community and consolidate all the information and place it there. So let me explain and elaborate more about our short-term project first. So in the short term, we want to develop a type of encyclopedia, particularly for the household items. Let's look at the example of what we can do. So this is an example that we can use, which is about the oven and ga sao. Yeah. So uh, actually the oven is actually unique from Pakakayo and Hmong ethnic. There are two types of that, but there's a slight difference between the two ethnics. So these two, and earlier it was about the uh, oven, right? So if you look here, it's like rice spatula or the pedestal tray. So uh, for example, the rice spatula is actually used for ceremonies and rituals. So uh, each year people in the community will make this particular rice spatula made from bamboo in September. But and who, anyone in the community can actually um, make this rice spatula. The significance of this uh, rice spatula is it's actually used in the hand a wrist binding ceremony or blessing ceremony. So it's a ceremony where people would come collectively together to give blessing in Lana style. They will have the wrist binding from the elderly to the children. But in Pakakayo, uh, the ceremony actually is a, a, a community activity and maybe in the, at the level of the family. But the tray or kanto, as you see, it's a wooden tray. It's actually made from one piece of wood. So before they didn't have plates, so they'll use this pedestal tray instead or kanto instead. So currently now it's not made anymore because it's difficult to actually find like one large piece of wood. And it's very difficult to safeguard uh, because you know there is a great uh, development in terms of other uh, household items in the modern days. So let's Kundawani uh, explain the uh, hand uh, binding blessing ceremony. So this is actually the use of household items uh, in the ceremony. So in the long term or the long phase, we want to try to develop uh, the uh, community center and also collect all the knowledge as well as I items and they develop a unique QR code for each item. Then we will want to conduct uh, like uh, activities uh, for the, the heritage activities and you know develop into a, like a cycle of a year cycle and what kind of activities exist and how that is linked with the way of life of Pagagaya. For example, this month in November, like uh, people harvest rice. So, you know, we want to try to uh, uh, promote and uh, let people know about how people harvest rice, harvest rice. They don't use any type of mach machine. So the, the next month they'll have performance because that's after they have harvested, harvested rice. So let's elaborate a little bit on the uh, wrist binding blessings. Yeah. So this is an image of using household items in the ceremony, the rice spatula or the kanto tray and the basket to put in the thread and also the clothing items. So this ceremony is actually used for blessing and for the people in the family. So how is this, uh, how are these activities going to benefit? So they can actually be a part of actually safeguarding and conserving their heritage. And they have, uh, they are able to develop their own heritage database. 
and they will have the center, a learning center, and the community will be able to disseminate all this heritage, and other people in the outside community can learn about their community. And lastly, the students in the community actually learn about their own cultural heritage. So the uh, community participation, uh, they can actually uh, take part in actually uh, information, uh, uh, providing information and the histories of those uh, household items. Then uh, we can actually like, conduct like a meeting with the people in the community and they can actually have input in the uh, um, of the encyclopedia. So uh, if we, we were, if we organize like a meeting for people in the community, we would actually take all this information back to them so they can preserve it. So people who can give us information is like a camera and like a person. So then Tony would like to end our presentation here. Thank you, UNESCO, for this opportunity. Thank you. เรียนเชิญทางคอมเมนเตอร์ so please uh, the first uh, commentator Jitendra can you hear me yes we can hear you well the first the first comment I like to say that after seeing the last two presentations I'm getting very hungry um, uh, they're, they're very excellent in terms of, uh, I think, content and in terms of, um, I think, the ambitions of the of the uh, presenters. Uh, I'm also uh, quite amazed in the last couple of days to see the passion that they have for what they are presenting and what they believe in. So that's all very good. Um, a general comment I'd like to make, and I'm not sure whether the team were here yesterday. On, on a positive note, I think that most of the presentations focus a lot on knowledge and tradition is, knowledge is a big part of tradition and heritage. So that's very important, preserving the knowledge and disseminating the knowledge. Um, what I find a little lacking in the presentations and you know, on the current presentation today is how what they do can provide livelihoods. Because at the end of the day, um, the people that you meet, the people who you are trying to rest, uh, protect in terms of heritage, your own community, your own lives, uh, they have the same aspirations like anyone else. They wish to have a good life, they wish to have a mobile phone perhaps, so, you know, they want to have a source of income, uh, and they probably are trying to figure out how, what they have in their life and their heritage can help them to achieve that. So I think you need to listen. I mean, I, I, am, I am spending a lot of my time in the field and I look at uh, why one of the challenges that came up yesterday was why the young do not wish to, um, you know, for example, protect or learn these skills. Uh, and I think there's a bit of a disjoint. And one small comment I like to make, actually it's not a small comment, it's a comment I see all the time. You're very tourism focused. And I think looking at what happened this year, uh, you have to, yes, it's very important, uh, it's a good way of also earning seasonal income, but it's not sustainable in the long way, in the long term. So the challenge you have is to try to bring these wonderful implements or techniques to the mainstream. There's a huge middle income group in, in, in Thailand, in the cities. Uh, there's a huge design uh, and knowledge and craft people who can bring all these household items to some extent to the kitchen. Right? So it doesn't have to necessarily be foreign. Uh, and I would try to ask you to think a little bit broader to, to make it relevant to today because tradition is also uh, something that's passed down and culture is changing. Okay, so that's my only two comments. I'll elaborate later and I'll let someone else also comment right now. So it's, it was very interesting. And it's interesting how you have integrated broader which is actually the uh, heritage center. If we go back to the first team who presented market. So what they lack and what you have is actually the community engagement. You know, uh, developing a community center, you can see the consolidation of the heritage from the kitchen, from food and the well-being of the community 
from uh, the food culture and uh, preservation of the household units. And I, I do want to see uh, the clear connection, the clearer connection in terms of community engagement. And the first commentator actually mentioned uh, the uh, inclusivity of in youth. If we'll go back to Matapa and the other groups who are from the South, I'm really impressed really that uh, your project all engage uh, the youth in uh, the community. There's a high, there's youth engagement. I have had the opportunity to interview youth in the South and other regions. Uh, some of them have migrated uh, for work or studying in big cities, for school in big cities. And uh, the common problem in small communities is actually seeking out uh, the third generation, the legacy to pass on uh, that knowledge. So I'm really glad that you want to develop the Block de Heritage Center. And, and, and I can actually see the possibility of technology uh, and knowledge transfer uh, from one generation to another. And, and how they can learn about this heritage and the youth. This youth, they're actually are uh, online native. They can actually, there are, they should be able to uh, be able to uh, transfer this to the next generation. So the uh, encyclopedia is a great idea because the community encyclopedia uh, will actually be a presentation from the host which is actually great that there's a heritage center being developed and you can see the coherence between their short term and long term and i actually i see the sdg you touched upon S sdg as well that you were able to link with for example in gold five uh, on gender equality because mostly community and food mostly it's uh, dominated by uh, women so the role of women in order to preserve this or safeguard this, it's just not in Thailand. There's so many communities all over the world that women are innovators and enhancers. So I think it's great. And I want to see that in your encyclopedia. And another point that I observe is the cultural, and I think I can see it's linked with climate action. Uh, on climate change. And I think it's one of the SDG and people don't really link to that. And another SDG is the sustainable, responsible con consumption and production. And lastly, many of you mentioned uh, the lack of knowledge transfer from generation to generation. I think you want to recognize uh, the uh, challenge and when you design your project, you will be able to address that those challenges. And uh, you also mentioned the change of the, in the society and so many challenge, but I don't really see uh, the resistance from the community. Maybe you want to identify that so you can, you can clearly uh, and, and address the challenge, uh, targeted challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Kun Monti Ra. Please, Ajahn Chu Pinit. So, Omoshapa to Dan Pa Son, you have uh, consolidated the uh, knowledge well, but uh, it's a shame that you don't get a lot of photos of the household items. So, if we, I think Ajahn Parita mentions that if you only touch upon the household items, it still won't be the cultural heritage. So maybe you want to work on that. Risk blessing ceremony, risk binding blessing ceremony. May you want to elaborate more on that. And, and also there's also liquor involved on go around uh, during the ceremony. And uh, that liquor is offered to the Holy Spirits. So the rice spatula, uh, that, that, that particular uh, item needs to be knocked on the tray and the risk threat is actually represents the blessing uh, before it's fine. 
And the rice actually used uh, in the ceremony, everyone will have to take a bite and the elderly will actually place uh, uh, food on, uh, on top of our heads. It's as a symbolic gesture. So you can see the relation between nature, the beliefs and the Holy Spirits of their culture. So I think you want to want to indicate uh, like uh, maybe relate in relate in relation of the items through time, like maybe in the new year or the farming or the circular farming, which is actually uh, an identity of Pagagayo, uh, which is actually unique, you know. And there are no other ethnic groups that actually uh, does agriculture ultra this way. Many items are inherently linked with this type of uh, farming. And it's great that you, I really compliment that you are going to develop an uh, encyclopedia. The reason for it is that, you know, these young generations, you know, uh, a lot of people have opted to use these uh, plastic items, right? And it's not really that durable, really. I mean, like uh, spatulas or... Yeah, household items that are made from plastic. And many people uh, now are is, is actually trying to buy household items as made from wood. So it's a great uh, opportunity to showcase what we already have, you know, and that's going to have, provide health benefits and social values as well. So I think you uh, maybe you, you want to add all of this and also link, uh, you know, all with the paradigms that's connected to this.